Welcome back. This week we're going to go with Kelly Gallup's Conehead Barely Legal. This has quickly become my go-to pattern on the Missouri, any river for that matter. It, it just flat out fishes, it really does, and it's a confidence thing with me. If I'm having a tough day, I'll go to this pattern, and it, it just seems like I'm always moving fish. Um, I still tie these in the regular uh, fish skull, but with the cone head, um, there's just some. There's just one minor difference really at the end. But with the fish skull, I still tie them a decent amount. But I tie those. These ones are scaled down. Those are in a one aught and two aught, and this one's in a one and a two, uh, 2461 Daiichi. It is scaled down a little bit, and then I'll go even down to like a four and a six sometimes. Let me get zoomed in, and we'll get going. So we're starting off with the 2461.2. Let's see. I went through and pre-sorted all the materials so you guys don't have to listen and watch me go through and select the materials. So you're welcome. <laughs> Should be a little bit quicker of a pattern here. With everything sorted out. Okay, there we go. So to start on this one, we're going to go with just a yellow marabou plume. I'm going to do this in the olive, and this is a sunburst yellow. I really started really started to tie with this a lot more as opposed to a straight yellow. I don't know, it just pops a little bit more. Doesn't matter one bit. If you want to use the, the straight yellow, the fish aren't going to care. But I do like the way this looks. It just stands out a little bit more to me. Maybe it's a better contrast with the olive I tied in, the olive brown. Whatever it may be, I like it. So go ahead just with your first stack of yellow right toward the back. And let me find... I got my gold flashaboo here. I'm going to go with two strands. I got about six. So two strands we're just going to double it over same as always with these marabou tails double it over we're going to have four on my side four on the camera side just go ahead and get these secured flip this over and then go ahead and pull tight and trim Next up, we're going to take just olive brown, and we're going to go right over the top on this one. Um, let's see, measure this out. The same length, maybe slightly longer with this olive, and I don't like that one. I don't like that one. Go figure. I spent all that time pre-sorting, and find one that I don't like right out of the gate. Hmm. It's just a little chewed up. So take two. I'll throw this one in. Yeah. <laughs> Getting down to the end of this pack. I don't really like this one too much but I'm not going to subject you guys to watching me nitpick over this so same length slightly longer if you want and then go ahead and just tie this in all the way to the back yeah I don't like that I'll live with it I'll live with it and then same thing right to the midway point go ahead and trim yeah I'm gonna have to look at that the entire time now and be Disgusted with it. <laughs> Not that you can tell a big difference, but I just didn't quite like either of those two. So, next, I'm going to take just some medium astaz, this is peach, and tie this in for the body. Get that good and secure, and we're going to take off to where we left off with our 
thread when we tied in the marabou. And then go ahead and run this. Get one full wrap, pinch your tail, and anchor. Three to four anchor. Three to four anchor. And it looks like I'll get about, let's take one off there. Go ahead and tie this off. Get that tied in. Now, with the yellow, you can get away with these being a little bit more sparse, like I explained on the big hole bug. These can be a little bit more sparse um, on the back portion. The front portion, I like to thicken them up, but they can be a little bit more sparse than your olive. I like that olive to really fill out. So just get that tied in for now. Don't worry about this estaz. It's kind of making a mess out of things, but it'll be all right. The olive I want just slightly more sparse as I go forward. Now especially once I get to the front hook, I like that to be a really thick, wispy plume. So we're going to go about halfway back our stack, halfway to three quarters of the way back with this. If you're going to air, air on the long side. Don't short yourself. I'll make a wimpy looking fly. Nobody likes that. Go ahead with this right up to the front. Leave yourself a little bit of room. So we still have two stacks and then some flash boot again in here. I know this thing looks wild right now, but as soon as I get this as soon as I get this estaz going again, it's gonna come into shape, I promise. So take your estaz right around, peel your fibers back, and then make this wrap right in front. I mean, actually touching your fibers and see how it just kind of slicks all of those all of, all of those fibers back. Really cleans that fly up. One full wrap, maybe two pinch and anchor. Um, get some of those fibers out of the way. I'm gonna go with one more. Leave yourself a little bit of room here. Don't take this stuff all the way up to the eye of your hook or you're just going to have it extremely too much bulk and it's going to wind up being tough to finish this off and not crowd your eye and rob yourself of articulation potentially not have enough room to get your wire through and then it's not going to move as free as it should make you mad cuss probably if you're anything like me uh, let's see here. I want to go with the yellow first. Same thing, half to three quarters of the way back. This one's a little sparse again. Um, and like I said, it's not a huge deal on this back hook if they're a little on the sparse side. I'd like this to be a little thicker. I might and will double it up actually. I think. No, I'm going to let that ride. Uh, nope, I lied. Where's my marabou? Just when you guys thought you were going to get away with having a quick, clean video, I went and got picky on you, so. This looks like it'll fill that section out a little bit better. This looks like it'll fill it out, but yeah, this much better. Much better. I'm happy with that. My cousin Troy was out here a couple of weeks back and we took a quick float down the mow and 
He stuck a pig of a brown on this pattern. A pig of a brown. People on that river swear you can't throw streamers in August. I beg to differ. I beg to differ. Let them keep thinking that. Right? Uh, next up, we're going to go with our olive plume here, getting a little thicker as we go. Same measurement, halfway to three quarter of the way back. Get that tied in. Spin this, trim it off nice and clean. And then the last thing we have for this back portion. Oh, that looks much better. Last thing we have for this back portion is I'm going to take one strand of gold flashaboo and I'm just going to run a lateral line down the side here. Go ahead and tighten that up, flip this over, and I'm going to have a lateral line coming down this side as well. Yeah. It wanted to roll on me. Now, trim that in a, right about, you know, halfway back your tail. Somewhere about that. I don't get real particular on the distance of it. I just kind of eyeball it and give it a quick trim. And then go ahead and whip finish our back portions done. Now, like I was saying, with the front stacks on the olive, I want those really wispy. You can get away with having this a little bit more sparse back here. You can see it's kind of, it's on the sparse side for sure. You can get away with that. It's fine. We're going to have some cover. Go ahead and just touch this up with some yellow real quick. Yellow, brown, olive, whatever colors. Next to the bench, I happen to have yellow, so that works. We're going to go ahead and get our size 1, 2461 in here. We're moving right along. Get your thread started. And then we're going to find the bead we like. We'll go with the orangish yellow looking thing. Throw that on there, get your back hook set on. Come on. Get your distance about how you want it. Give it two or three loose wraps, that way you're still able to manipulate it if you have to. I'm gonna give it just a quick turn ever so slightly that looks good distance seems pretty good yep I like it so just run your wire up to the front get this in a little cradle there I'm gonna fold this back over itself bring this wire back around and then Pull tight on this a couple of times. And I'm going to leave off right where the barbell hook makes its ascent. And we're going to start with yellow here on the bottom. I'm just going to take two yellow stacks and I'm going to run these right down the side at a downward angle. First off, I want to measure this out, make sure I'm about halfway back. These are the only ones to where if you're going to go a little bit short, you can. I try and keep it right at the halfway point, not much further, because they will have a tendency to wrap around and get fouled up. So if you want, keep these a little on the short side. Now we're going to go ahead with another yellow. 
on the camera side this time and this will fill out this will really give a good cover for this fly nice clean skirt work this back to the barb of the hook and then I'm going to take these two right down the side just shy of the halfway point call that good Now, whenever you're doing this, don't make the mistake of going halfway to the eye because your materials are going to be stopping right there. So just be mindful of that for a while. I wouldn't think about it. I'd just get the tying and then I'd wind up having a longer section in the back and the short would be sm smaller or the, the front would be shorter and it just wasn't a good looking fly. So now like I was saying with the wispier sections, I may have to double this one up. I think it's going to be all right, but I want these progressively as I go forward to get thicker and thicker. So we peel that back just a touch. Set that material in, and we're starting to build this bulk for our body. We got a nice clean cover. Looks like one continuous fly. It doesn't look like there's two separate ones there. Nice clean body on this. So we're going to get our peach tied back in. Having trouble with words there for a second. Get this tied in, and then we're just going to work this right to our halfway point. not to trap any fibers get that one full turn pinch and anchor three to four pinch and anchor I think I can get one more there that looks to be close to halfway that's good now let me just tie this off and get that out of my way for now. Uh, which one's thicker here? I'll put that one. That one will go in the front. So same thing now with the yellow. I do start getting a little bit thicker plumes just to fill this out. It progresses on the way up. Just the fly looks so much better with these thick plumes so halfway back again halfway to three quarter measure that out get this one tied in make sure that I still like that distance looks pretty good I'll just give it a quick pull take a little bit more lock that in Take this right up to the front, right to the cone head. Um, this cone head, by the way, is a tungsten. Uh, you can use just the regular brass ones if you want. I tie them in both. If I'm fishing a river that's, you know, like the mo, that's a little bit, a little bit deeper, a uh, little bit quicker in spots, I'll go ahead and use the tungsten. If I know I'm fishing some shallower water, I'll go with just brass. But the majority of the time, I would say that I use the tungsten. Now, get this olive tied in. I'm going to have to double this one up for sure. Just getting slim pickings here toward the end of this pack. This one's getting doubled up for sure. doesn't quite look how I want it to so 
We're gonna find another one here. What do we got? This will probably do. This will probably do. Yeah, that olive was looking lost. Looking lost, so we're just gonna double this up. Oop, didn't advance that back. We should be good. Yep, looks good. Now, take this back to the front, and then same thing. If you want, if this estaz is getting in your way, you can go ahead and cut and retie it back on. Um, I just kind of manipulate it as I go around my feathers and it seems to work out all right but for a while I was all thumbs trying to do that the more you work with it the easier it'll get so now same thing I'm gonna bring this right around be careful not to trap these fibers get one full rotation with your staz and set it same thing don't go all the way to the cone leave yourself one full wrap with this estaz it'll make life easier i promise so we still have a decent amount of materials to get on here now we're only going to tie the yellow in for now we're going to tie the yellow in, go with some other material. Boy, that's a good wispy fiber right there. That's a winner. That's a winner. Go ahead and get this one tied in halfway to three quarter. And this is going to suck down into the cone, which is exactly what you want. Trim that as close as possible. All that material is sucking down into the cone, and it's just going to stabilize that cone for you some. Just make a couple of wraps, clean everything up. Everything looks good. Could have got a little longer with that yellow, probably. Yeah, no, that should be all right. That should be all right. So then the next thing we got is another piece of gold flashaboo. We're just going to take this, run it probably I would I would say a quarter away back your front hook. Bring this around, and then your lateral line will come, say a quarter of the way, boom, right there. Just go ahead and trim that off. Now you got your lateral lines going down the side. Uh, that's going to want to flop around all over the place, but it'll be all right. It'll all work out here in a second. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to take this uh, ice wing fiber, and this is just minnow back, and I'm going to take just a little bit of this, kind of clean this stuff up. Don't take a whole lot of this. Just a little bit goes a long way. And we're going to take this on the top portion, not directly over the top, but on the top portion of your fly, double it over and then just run it back the same way on the camera side as you did as I did the top or my side. And then just go ahead and thin this stuff out. That looks pretty good. 
get our length about the same and then just thin this stuff out. It's not a straight cut, it's not a clean cut. Uh, just like when you're working with the Senyo's laser dub, just kind of push your scissors through it, let it just kind of grab and pick that stuff out a little bit. Um, for the next portion of this, we're going to run another set of lateral lines, but this is going to be with our. Oh, I don't like it. I don't like any of those. There we go. There's. That's not a good match. We'll get there. These two look pretty good. We're going to run some lateral lines with this yellow dyed grizzly saddle hackle. And I'm going to take this almost back to the tail on this fly. I'm going to set this with my side right I'm going to set this straight up and down. It's easier to get this stuff tied in when it's straight up and down like that. Everything looks good. I'm going to double over my stem and tie it in. And then just take that stem and give it a quick trim. Just gives you a little bit more security when you double that stem over. I noticed I started losing a couple uh, lateral line feathers after a couple of fish and doubling that stem over seemed to help a little bit. So when I tie this in initially I'm going to grab a little bit of the feather. I'm not going straight stem. So I will have a little bit of that feather on there. It just bites a little bit, gives you a little bit extra security kind of rolled on me to the side a little bit but that's all right once again grab that stem well, if I were to really get picky on this one I would redo that for the sake of time I'm not going to I don't like how it's sitting but yeah, I lied. <laughs> I lied. I'm taking that off. I can't live with that. Can't live with it. I'm not going to tie the whole fly, have it looking clean, and then have one feather just being a mess on there. So, we'll try that again. Okay, that's looking good. Keep these wraps pretty loose. I still have enough to double over this, this stem. Come on. There it is. That's more like it. That's more like it. All right, we're getting to the end here, I promise. We're getting there. Now, do all of that, and then the last thing that we do before we finish this fly is we put our top stack of olive brown marabou on here. Same thing, measure this out just like we did the entire way through. Measure this out, and then this is where you want your wispiest feather is up in the front. It just looks a lot better when it's nice and nice and full up there. I really could double that up but I'm gonna leave it. It looks pretty good. Now you're gonna have this little gap right here. Pull tight on that. You're gonna have this little gap and then to get rid of that what I'm gonna do is just do a quick dubbing loop get around that once
Quick dubbing loop. I'm going to take this gold ice dub. This is the last section of this, and this is just going to cover up that gap that you have between your last marabou stacks and your uh, cone head. So I'm just going to throw this in here loose. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just throw this in here. And these strands are a little bit longer, and you'll see as I wrap this in here. It gives, it gives a neat little effect when you get all of this in. Now, get this in the cradle. Get over here. And try not to trap any of your fibers. Just nice loose wraps at first until you get everything how you want it. And then these last couple work it right into the cone head. Right in there. Try and force as much dubbing in there as you possibly can. And that gets it nice and snug. That, that cone head's not going anywhere. Tie this off and then you're done. If you want to, you can pick this gold stuff out and it'll give like a nice little splayed out effect. Um, it kind of naturally does that by itself. But... I'll just let this one go. I need a little bit more dubbing in there. Just a little bit more. It's all going to disappear, so I'm not going to throw it in another loop. I'm just going to wrap a quick little piece on here. And I need to just force this down into the cone head a little bit more. There we go. Get rid of that excess. And then go ahead and whip finish. Perfect. Good to go. Now I have this thing kind of turned on its side here so it's looking a little funky to you guys. But there it is. I got a little sparse in the back, but and that's if I'm really gonna get picky on this. As soon as it gets wet, it's gonna it's gonna look fine. It's gonna look fine. But there it is, there's Kelly Gallup's cone head barely legal. If you guys have any questions on this one, as always. Some of these lateral lines aren't cooperating for me, but uh, yeah, it'll work. I'll really get picky when it comes time to take the picture for that one. But as always, if you guys have any questions or comments on this, leave them with me. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. But thanks again for watching, and we'll catch you next week.